Welcome back to the chapter 19 lecture. This is part two. Part two is a lot shorter and simpler than part one. So our sixth learning objective for chapter 19 is to account for defined benefit plans with benefits that invest or accumulate other than pension plans. In addition to pension plans, companies provide their employees with other post-employment benefits as part of their compensation package. Examples include healthcare, prescription drugs, life insurance, long-term disability, dental and eye care, legal and tax services, tuition assistance, or free or subsidized travel, depending on the business. In 2000, the Canadian standards changed to require companies to account for all defined benefit plans where the benefits vest or accumulate on the same basis as they account for pension plans. Both IFRS and ASPE make no attempt to accrue the benefit costs and liabilities of employee benefits that do not accumulate with additional, with additional service, such as parental leave. You don't get more parental leave the longer that you've been at a company. The total costs and liability are recognized when the event occurs. So in this case, you have a baby, you go on parental leave, that's when they recognize it. And this is called an event accrual method of accounting for benefits. Learning objective number seven, identify the types of information required to be presented and disclosed for defined benefit plans, prepare basic schedules and be able to read and understand such disclosures. Employers with two or more defined benefit plans are required to separately measure the benefit cost, defined benefit obligation and plan assets for each funded plan. So you can't add two plans together. If, if all result in a defined benefit liability or a defined benefit asset, the plans can be reported together with and net liabilities of one plan cannot be combined with net assets from another. Neither standards include guidance on long versus short term and most are found under long-term classifications. So most pension obligations are gonna be long-term long uh, liabilities. Presentation on the income statement. There's no guidance from IFRS or ASPE on reporting the current service costs and the net finance interest cost. So there's three options. You could report them all separately on your income statement. You could show them as a single benefit cost or you could show them all even grouped in with similar expenses. And most companies show them all in one item, in one line item. Disclosure requirements. So ASPE requires uh, you to disclose the description of your plan, major changes in the plan, the dates of the actuarial valuations, the fair value of the plan assets, the deferred ben defined benefit obligation, and the surplus or de deficit and how this relates to the balance sheet account. ASPE also requires that if not shown separately on the income statement, remeasurements and other items be disclosed in the notes. So where we had those um, differences between expected return and actual return or an or a remeasurement of an actuarial gain or loss, those items, even though they go through pension expense for ASPE because we don't have OCI, they need to be disclosed separately in the notes of the financial statements. I for us requires also requires everything ASPE and additional information such as reconciliations of the changes in the DBO and plan assets, details of the amounts included in net income, underlying assumptions and sensitivity analysis, and other information related to determining cash flows. Learning objective number eight. Identify differences between IFRS and ASPE accounting for pension plans and other post-employment benefits and what changes are expected in the near future. Both ASPE and IFRS agree on the objective to recognize a liability and a cost in the reporting period in which an employee has provided the service that gives rise to the benefits. The only differences in how these are applied under IFRS and ASPE, which there are differences in how it's applied using OCI or pension expense, IFRS is broader and covers more employee benefits and pension expense recognition differs in terms of classifications. Looking ahead, the most significant updates to IFRS and ASPE were completed several years ago. However, in February, new requirements for plan amendments, curtails or settlements were issued by for IFRS and it's broader and it covers more than ASPE. So that's not new, it's 2018. And no significant changes from that are expected in the future. 
And that concludes the lecture for chapter 19, part two. I told you it was pretty short compared to part one. So please join me for the tutorial section as we look through just a few quick questions.